Uh, greetings. Uh, let me share with you another topic. Endoscopy during COVID-19 pandemic infection prevention practices. I would like to acknowledge the support from Dr. John Stolen Endowed Professorship, Mr. Charles Butt and H.E.B. Grant, and thank Ms. Angela Deal for her medical illustrations. I, was, I would like to also thank all my colleagues from around the world who contributed to this literature, and this formed the basis for this uh, talk. These are the topics that I would like to cover, and uh, today our focus is on infection prevention protocol. When you want to prevent infection in your endoscopy unit staff, uh, you have to think about three important issues. You have to look at workflow of your endoscopy unit because COVID-19 has certainly changed the way we practice medicine. You have to assign specific areas for COVID-19 patients in the reception area, preparation and recovery base, and specific rooms for COVID-19 if possible. In addition, it is also important to have a room, a changing room for your staff in order for them to change from their street clothes to work clothes and then change back at the end of the day so that they do not carry home the virus and prevent transmission of infection to their families. And finally, when it comes to PPE, both donning and doffing of PPE are very important and it is, in, it is critical to have specific assigned rooms for both donning and doffing wherever it is feasible. These rooms will have instructions on how to do doffing step by step, and if it is possible to do that, please do that. If not, you may not, you may have to think about creating a workflow in the room for doffing. One should educate the staff about three different aspects of COVID-19 infection and its prevention. Coming to the infection, the triangular area of the face, eyes, nose, mouth, are the entry point for the virus and you should protect them. You should not touch these areas with a hand that has not been sanitized or washed before doing so. When it comes to hand hygiene, most of us do cursory hand hygiene and with COVID-19, we should take it seriously. We should do that before touching face, eyes, and nose, before and after contact with patient, before donning PPE, and before every step of doffing PPE. Finally, about wearing proper PPE for the type of case that you're going to encounter and proper doffing of PPE. And uh, doffing of PPE, people can make mistakes and one should practice proper doffing. In order for proper doffing to happen, it is a good idea to have clearly laid out instructions along the wall with stations for removal as well removal of various items, as well as hand hygiene between those steps. So let's focus on hand hygiene. This is really very important. It is not just about washing your hands for a few seconds. There is a sequence that you need to follow. And let me take you through step by step. 
hand hygiene with the use of soap. Take, cover the whole palm with soap. Rub your hands to create a nice lather to disinfect the palms. Then the webs of the fingers, then in between the fingers, inside the fingers, web of the tongue, I'm sorry, web of the thumb, fingertips, and then finally wash your hands thoroughly and dry your hands and close the water with the tissue and make sure you dry your hands. Hand washing must be done for at least 20 seconds minimum. This is the best way you could protect yourself from COVID-19 and other infections. Let us ne next look at using hand sanitizer. Again, the steps are exactly the same. Cover the whole palm with alcohol-based sanitizer. Alcohol kills the virus. Rub your hands, then in between your fingers and the webs in between the fingers, then inside in between fingers, inside the fingers, the web of the thumb, fingertips, and finally dry your hands. You make sure that you follow the sequence and also make sure that your hands are dry before you do anything. Do not wipe off your hands. Let the hand sanitizer dry. Hands that are safe when they are dry. Keep this thing in mind. There are different levels of PPE. Anyone performing endoscopy should have a cap, N95 mask, gloves, gown, eye shield, and shoe covers. So let me take you through how to wear PPE. Let's go through this step by step. First, put on the hairnet. It's probably a good idea to have a hairnet when you enter the endoscopy suite. Do proper hand hygiene for at least 20 seconds and let the hands dry before you put your gown. And use an impermeable gown and ask the second operator to assist you to close the back of your gown. Put on the mask, N95 mask, and for those who have limited supply of N95 mask, it is a good idea to cover that N95 mask with a surgical mask. If you're planning to reuse the N95 mask for the time being, until we have enough supplies. Then put on the goggles or you can put on the face shield and finally put on two pairs of gloves. One inner pair of glove covering the skin up to the wrist and the second one, the outer pair of gloves goes over the gown up to the wrist. Double gloves are helpful. So let us look at once you finish the procedure and you want to doff make sure that you are not in a hurry. We endoscopists tend to be in a hurry after a procedure trying to pull off everything. Take time and do it properly because this is the time when you are likely to get contaminated. In a recent study, they have shown that 90% of errors in doffing. The study was as recent as 2019. So take time when you doff. 
So if you have a gown that is tied on the back, uh, take the help of a second operator or assistant to remove the gown and you remove the gown from inside out. Then uh, remove the first pair of gloves and then perform hand hygiene. Remove the second pair of gloves, perform the hand hygiene again before exiting the room. Wear a new pair of gloves after exiting the room and hand hygiene. Then clean a surface with a disinfectant germicidal wipe where you want to place your face shield. Perform hand hygiene, then remove face shield by grabbing the elastic in the back. Do not touch the front of the face shield. That area is contaminated. Use a germicidal wipe to disinfect the face shield before putting it on the surface. Then remove the gloves and again perform hand hygiene. As you can see, hand hygiene after every step is critical. And then remove the surgical gloves without touching the front of the surgical. Then remove this surgical mask without touching the front of the surgical mask by hooking back the ear loops and then pulling off your face. Perform hand hygiene and then remove the N95 mask. Do not touch the front of the N95 mask. We get used to doing that, but do not do that. Instead, pull off the elastic straps one by one, the lower one first and then the upper one uh, so that you pull it off and avoid contamination. If you decide to reuse the N95 mask, uh, put them in brown bags with your name and then perform hand hygiene again. Wear a surgical mask and keep the surgical mask on until the end of your shift unless you need to do another case and you, you need N95 mask. Practice proper social distancing. This is critical. At least two meters or six feet. And if you want to go and put a report or open a computer, think about it. Disinfect with the germicidal wipe before you touch any object, especially if you want to type on a computer, disinfect that area, and then uh, do, it, do the job. And after the job, again, hand sanitize. That is really critical. It is very difficult to follow these steps, but this is the only way you can prevent yourself and your colleagues from getting infected. Infection prevention practices are really very, very important. Be safe. Thank you.